Oh, that's hot. That's hot. <laughs> okay, let's check out the requests. See what we're doing this week. Hey, Grant, can you make a human torch effect? Can you do the human torch? Human torch, please, oh please. Human torch! Please, can you do the effect where the human torch is on fire? How to make the human torch? Great job, can you do a human torch? Human torch, human torch, human torch, human torch, human torch, human torch. Yeah! Ugh, all these human torch requests just make me wanna... Make a tutorial about it. Hey guys, welcome to Film Learn, the show dedicated to learning you some filmmaking and learning good. And today we're taking on a long overdue request. For years and years, people have been asking me for a human torch effect. And thanks to Zach at CG Visuals, we're making that a reality today. Now just for a little bit of backstory, this actually started as a review episode. Zach from CG Visuals sent me through his new pack that he's been developing called Trap Code Fire version 2.1, which has a whole bunch of awesome fire elements that are all created within Trap Code Particular. And as I was reviewing it, I saw this particular project file where you can actually just draw a shape layer and turn it into a fire element. I immediately started thinking, human torch. So naturally I sent him an email back and I said, I'd love to turn this into say a human torch effect. What do you think about that? And he said, hmm, I never thought of that. Just give me a day or two and I'll get back to you. So a day or so goes by and then he sends me the project file and he updates the entire pack to include a human torch project file. How awesome is that? So guys, fair warning, you are gonna need the CG Visuals Trap Code Fire version 2.1 pack in order to create this effect as well as a copy of Trap Code Particular. And in addition to that, naturally, you're going to have to shoot your actor on a green screen, acting out their whole flaming on thing. Unless you want to rotor them out, which is totally fine as well. All we need is that actor in isolation. So you got all that, shoot your actor on a green screen, you also need a copy of Trap Code Particular, and you need a copy of Trap Code Fire version 2.1. Once you got all that, let's get to work, shall we? Okay guys, here we are in After Effects and I've opened up Project Files 13 in the Trap Code Fire version 2.1 pack from Zach at CG Visuals. Now I just want to show you how easy it is to make this effect because Zach has essentially done all the heavy lifting here guys. All we need to do to get the basic effect is grab our actor footage and drop it into the comp called Emission Layer Comp. Now in my case I've already keyed this footage out, but if you want to key out your actor in this comp, go for it. Now what we want to do is place this footage around the 5 second mark here as that's when the timing of the flame on effect begins. This will do fine for now because we can always adjust the timing later. I'm just going to scale this one down. There we go. Next we have to define the emission area for the fire particles in the next comp. To do that is also very easy gang. We just head to effect, generate and fill. And all we have to do is just set this to white and bam we now have turned our keyed footage into essentially an animated shape layer. That's part one, already done. Now what we can do is select our actor footage, copy it, head to the final export comp and simply paste it in between these two labeled layers and we're going to actually get a pretty good result by default. Now as I mentioned in the preamble, this does take some time to render each frame, so all I can say is, be patient. Hmm, not bad. Now let's tweak it. Let's move on to the next comp over here called the Fire Particles Comp. In here is where we fine tune and define our fire a little bit more. You can see up the top here we have our controls. Now these bad boys let you fine tune the fire and glow look. You can also see we have the emission rate and the fire lifetime. We can set the wind direction here. So say you want the fire to drift in a certain direction, you can turn it up to favor the right, like so. And naturally, you lower the value to turn the wind to a left direction. Next up, we have the Atmos Haze Radius and Intensity, and these guys act very much like regular glow controls, with one changing how feathered out the glow is, and the other controlling how blown out and intense that glow is. Next is the Fire Sharpness, and since this isn't real fire, it's best to keep that low, otherwise it looks kind of weird. Extract Fire Luminance essentially chokes the overall glow of the entire comp, and the more you increase this, the less orange your clip will be. Choke Over Flames controls the amount of these little licks of flame that you have on screen going up the actor's body. The lower the number, the more of these little body flames are gonna peek through. You can see I have this set pretty high because I wanted to maintain the overall, I don't know, look of my actor. 
rather than just being covered in these things. Flame on Aura does exactly what it sounds like. It actually controls the flame on action, blowing out the image in a ball of fire. Now guys, I didn't mess with this at all because I like the controls, but feel free to have a play. In fact, feel free to have a play with all of these controls. Boost Aura Intensity adds or subtracts extra glow to the Aura section of this torch effect. Aura Displacement controls the amount of heat distortion displacement effects, that warping around the body or Aura. Once again guys, I dug the look Zack had here and I did not mess with it. Lastly, we have the motion sample controls. Now the lower the value is, the less blur you'll have, and you guessed it, the higher this value is, the more motion blur, and equally, the more render time you will require. So 16 looks good to me. Now the randomized fire feature here is set to a kind of arbitrary number really. By default, it was set in the 4000 range, and since I'm anal, I just made it up to 5000. And I gotta say, it made very little difference overall. Now gang, one thing I will mention is that if you have this issue where your aura is showing around the bottom of your frame like so, and that's because our aura is defined by the alpha channel, all you need to do to fix that is click on the flaming aura edge right here, head to motion tile and have a play with the width and height and bam, problem is now solved. Now let's head into the final comp and finish this off guys. Now, once it loads, we can see that we have a sweet effect here guys. But I did do a little bit of tweaking, guys. Firstly, I duplicated the footage, soloed it, changed the transfer mode to add, and ironically, I added some stuff. Firstly, I head up and I added a tune effect, set it to edges, and then I had a play with the threshold, detail, and width until I got something like this. I then gave it the old switcheroo and headed up to channel, invert, and I made my edges white. I then added a glow, up the radius and threshold to make it stand out a little more. And finally, I added the fast blur to soften it overall, and added a quick photo filter to give those edges a yellow look. Now gang, the last thing I did with this layer is I animated the opacity on from 0 to 100, and I did this over the course of a few frames, starting when the flames here are quite bright just to hide the transition. Now if I unsolo that, you can see that it's quite subtle, but it emphasizes the edges around our actor, and it just helps to highlight certain details and edges that get lost in the fire. Now gang, I did do one other thing with our footage layer down below, and it's pretty simple, but it's actually kind of effective. I added a color grade that darkened the image, but kept the highlights and I just animated that on during the initial flame on. Now what this does is it allows the actor's features to look more on fire, which is very reminiscent of the movie Johnny Storm. You always saw less detail in the actor because the flames sort of filled in the gaps. Now since we're not doing a fully CGI fire simulated actor, this is sort of the next best thing. If I saw the lay, you can see what's happening as the actor sort of does that, he gets a little bit redder and then at the point where he's flaming on the whole image darkens but you can still see those highlights popping through the other final thing i did was the glowing eyes and guys i totally cheated here all i did was take my keyed footage open up the captain marvel effect project file from a few weeks back and i just tracked the eyes using the easy expression in that project i then soloed set eyes rendered them out and I just dropped them into this particular composition. It's cheating, but it's effective cheating. So guys, that's how I built my human torch effect. And you know what the best part is about this game? This is only one of 20 fully controllable trap code fire assets in the pack from CG Visuals. So effectively, we only touched on 5% of this pack and look how cool just this one effect is. Add up all those steps and you get something like this. So guys, that's a pretty easy human torch effect using Trapcode Particular and Trapcode Fire version 2.1 from CG Visuals.
Now guys, if you haven't checked out Trap Code Fire from CG Visuals, I highly encourage you to click the link below and check it out for yourself because it is an awesome pack. As I mentioned in the tutorial, there are 20 different project files here for you to work with and all of them are fully customizable. Just by looking at all the different fire elements that you can create with this pack, I guarantee you will not be disappointed. Now guys, it wouldn't be a fair review of this pack if I didn't mention one of the negatives and that is being the render time. Just checking out a preview does take a long time, even on quarter res. And that's just part and parcel of working with this pack. It takes a long time to cache a preview, even on quarter resolution, and it does take even longer to render out. But having said that, once you do finally get that render out, it is definitely worth the wait. So if you don't want to really set fire to anything and you want more flexibility than you'll get with stock footage, Trapcode Fire version 2.1 is a really good way to go, as long as you practice a little bit of patience for those render times. But for now guys, that is my time. If you enjoyed the episode, please smash that like button guys, it really does help. And hey, if you are new here, hit that subscribe button below and turn that notification bell on so you don't miss a single film learning episode. I've got two other episodes right over here, as long as my social media crap over here and I've got a link to the CG visuals channel uh, around here somewhere but until I see you again guys keep learning <laughs>